Welcome to another video. In this video, we're gonna pull our very first non-toxic stone lithography prints. Over the past few months, Kyle and I have been exploring the world of non-toxic stone lithography, and now we're taking everything we've learned to create an addition of prints each. We purchased a whole bunch of new chemistry we'd never used before. We grained a stone in the studio for the very first time, and we tried a bunch of different drawing materials and pulled our first test proofs. We've been wanting to print stone lithos in our shop since we opened in 2009, so we are thrilled that all of this experimentation has led us to be in a position where we can actually make stone litho prints. The first step is to draw an image on the stone. Well, I mean, the first step is graining the stone, but we actually did all of that in advance because we're printmakers, so we were planning and we were planning ahead. What are the secrets of studio practice? I sometimes struggle with coming up with like the subject matter of my piece. I know I love drawing flowers, so I decided to do a still life of a vase in, with flowers. Something that I really wanted to see if it was possible in this process was to get a variety of different tonal ranges in one print. I was curious to see if that was going to be possible with this new chemistry. For materials, I chose three different tools. I started my drawing with the litho crayons, working from the lightest to the darkest. Once I finished drawing my entire piece with the crayons, I went back in with autographic ink to create a sharp, bold line that would contrast against the softer line work of the crayon. And lastly, I went in with the snake slip to create some reductive areas predominantly seen in the table area of my print. My image exclusively used autographic ink. I really wanted to see what kind of limitations there were in terms of this material, as this type of mark is predominantly found in all of my artwork. I was actually very frustrated with using the calligraphy pens and autographic ink. I found that the calligraphy pens, they might be just really poor quality, but they really didn't hold very much ink. It was only about maybe an inch of a line segment before I had to go back and recharge the calligraphy pen. On the thicker marks, I was actually going back even more frequent than that, and that made for like some really frustrating drawing. I would like to take a moment to just thank the Ontario Arts Council for being a big supporter of my research and the project that we're doing here in the studio. Thank you so much for supporting this project. With the drawings completed, we're ready to move into our etching phase. If you want to know more about the etching phase and what steps go into that, you can refer back to one of our previous videos for more details. But to give you a quick summary, here it goes. We rosin the stone. We talc the stone. We make a mixture of gum, arabic, and tannic acid and brush that into the stone. We then buff that down with cheesecloth. We wait one day. The next day, we wake up, we do biosolute, and we wash out the stone. We take bio lac and rub that into the stone for one minute. We hair dry for five minutes, wait. We bring it into the studio, we ink it up, and then we make another mixture of gum arabic and tannic acid and brush that into the stone, and we buff that down with cheesecloth, and then we wait yet another day. And on the third day, we wash out the image with soybean oil, and we move right into printing. We are printing with Arnheim 1618. This is a 245 GSM paper. It is 100% archival and cotton. I am going to roll up some ink. Forgot how tacky this ink is. We keep, we keep our rollers in a little sock so that they stay nice and happy. It's actually just the pant leg of a pair of old jeans. When I'm rolling it up, I'm rolling into the ink and then I kind of give it a little like twist so that the ink is rolling across the whole roller. If I just like rolled back and forth like this, then I would only be rolling up half of the roller. Because this ink is so stiff, it's gonna take me a little while to roll this out. 
We have our ink rolled out. We have paper soaking um, just behind the camera. The stone is right here. We're going to wash the stone with water to clear off the etch that is on there. And then we're going to ink it up and pull a proof. Kyle is also going to set the pressure on the press. We're going to set the pressure to my 1854 Parks Lithography Press. This press was donated to us by Otis Tamersowskis. I love you, Otis. Thank you so much for this press. This whole setup here is Chrissy's stone is on the press bed. We have a metal chassis that is acting as kind of a, um, I guess a wedge, so to speak, between the edge of the press bed and the edge of the stone, so that when the stone is engaged under the pressure of the press, it doesn't slip backwards. I have some scraps of the paper that we are actually going to be printing with, and we are going to just put those on top. And we are going to put two pieces of newsprint. I have just a piece of paper folded in half. We're going to apply some fresh tin pin grease to the top of this plexiglass. This is what's going to lubricate the scraper bar as it exerts an incredible amount of pressure over top of the stone. So this is a scraper bar. It's a piece of hardwood with a beveled edge, uh, a 45 degree and a 45 degree, with a little bit of a front facing surface and a strap of leather wrapped around it. And this one happens to have a bit of grease onto it and so that's the darker color you're seeing. And the goal here is to slide this into the housing of the press, tighten it together, and this is what provides contact between the printing press and the surface of the tin pin sitting above the stone. What we're looking to do is to align the scraper bar so that when we engage the pressure of the press, it engages on the stone, not off of it. So we are going to look at the side of the stone and we're gonna roll the stone into the press bed and we are just gonna visually align the scraper bar that's engaged in the press to the edge of the stone and we're gonna mark that off with tape. Then we're gonna send the stone further down the line and we're gonna mark where we need to stop, release the pressure and lift off. I've marked the start and stop points of the press where it is safe for the scraper bar to engage and disengage from the printing press. I engaged the pressure of the press and then I lowered the scraper bar to meet the tin pin. And when I felt resistance, I disengaged and now we're going to turn it down half of a revolution and that's going to be where we start our, that's where we start pressure. This may lighten after one or two prints or increase depending on what happens with the paper, the packing, the tin pin, and all the other variables. But this is my starting point for determining pressure. Now let's get into making the addition. And we're wiping down the surface of our stone. We're not pressing hard, it's a light wipe. This is to help repel the ink from the areas of the stone that don't have the drawing. Then we're taking our roller and we're just running it across the surface of the stone. If I let this dry and I forgot to sponge it before laying the ink down, ink would just adhere all over the stone. So it wouldn't just lay where the ink is. So that's why it's really important to remember the water step. I'm just pulling my proofs on newsprint that I'm laying one of the pieces of paper that I will be printing on later on top and that's just so that the pressure is consistent. artist confessional if we didn't have something to confess and my confession is that I tried to cheat by using ink that we already had out from the last time we were doing printing and using an ink that I'm not very familiar with for printing in lithography so generally speaking I use a Vanson rubber based ink with some magnesium in it I tried to use the crayon black and the shop mix black instead of the Vanson ink 
on top of that, these inks have been sitting out for quite a while. And I think that it's burned me, or at least that's the assumption I'm going to make right now. So what has happened is as soon as I switched from printing on the newsprint to printing on the rag paper, all the paper completely stuck to the stone. This is something that I've seen happen with uh, polyester plates, but I've never had it happen to stones before. So I'm a little miffed. I don't really know exactly what I've done wrong. Tomorrow I'm gonna come out, I'm gonna mix up the Vanson ink like I normally would. I might spend some time tonight researching the best way to deal with this. Like, do I have too much ink on my stone? Is that the problem? We soaked this paper. Is that an issue? Is this paper not the best paper to use for lithography? If so, I might go hunt down some uh, Somerset paper that I'm pretty sure I have upstairs because I know that paper will print. So if I use a paper that I know will work and I use an ink that I know will work and I'm still getting this result, then it's something that I'm not familiar with. And this is generally how I troubleshoot. I try to get back to exactly what I am comfortable and I've seen success from before and then reduce down till I find the actual problem. So that's the goal. Hi, welcome back to the shop. We are trying round two of printing this stone. I have, whoopsies. I have rolled out some Vanson rubber-based black and I've added some magnesium carbonate to get the right level of stiffness. And I've rolled out a nice even layer of ink. Now we're going to try to print this print once again. Let's print. Oh yeah, Vanson's already doing better. So I'm a little lighter on the top, like overall, I would say. And I think it's actually the stone because as the pressure is moving down the stone, I can feel it getting tighter sort of around this mark. So this top bit is getting a bit blurry. It's also where I have the lightest drawing, but I do think that it's, I think the stone is higher on this end and lower on this end. So I'm gonna put maybe a sh sheet of newsprint, like one layer of newsprint underneath this side um, to about this area. Oh, going way better. Look, that gray mark that we didn't even see. So that gray mark that we were losing in the first few is now there. And even these little gray, these were really lightly drawn. So they're showing up. We're also getting all the gray in behind these. We are still getting some sticking though. See, look how we've lost some newsprint on the stone paper up right here so I think that old ink is shit I wish that I knew how to like take it off stuff like this really is so heartbreaking and frustrating when you're in the studio so I'm doing my best to not like um, just give up completely I'm gonna stick with it and try to bring this print back and hopefully it will work I really like this drawing and I would love to not have to draw it again so so I'm going to rosin, talc, re-gum, and then wash out the stone and then try to bring it back again. And Kyle's gonna take over working on his stone now. I'll check back in later. 
The paper sticking to Chrissy's stone is a problem, but I don't think it's a problem with the chemistry. I think it's a bit of a problem on us and how we followed the steps. In Dwight Pogue's book, at the end of the second etch, the long traditional version, you're supposed to wipe out the stone with soybean oil before moving into printing. Chrissy didn't do that, and I think that's why some of the older ink, the thicker and stickier and tackier shop and crayon black, is causing some of the paper to rip off. Now, I used a bit of vegetable oil because I don't own soybean oil, but soybean oil is a derivative of all, it is a vegetable oil. It is just a different vegetable oil. So I used a very small amount on a piece of paper towel and I rubbed down the image and it didn't really do too much other than kind of make my paper towel a little bit dirtier in spots. I rubbed the vegetable oil in for maybe about two minutes and then I buffed it with light to medium pressure. Now the book says I'm supposed to use a hair dryer or a litho fan to dry out the stone. We're going to do that. That's going to take a couple minutes and then we're going to see about washing it out with some water and inking it up and seeing what we get. This paper I printed damp and it, well, it's shredded. You can see that on the stone. There's all of these bits where paper is like physically stuck to the ink. So it's been a mixed bag of successes and failures. Some of our successes have been with Chrissy Stone, where she got all of these light tones and these light grays and these light marks, which we hadn't yet kind of achieved. I think that they were really successful and when we were printing with dry paper, the paper was not just sticking to the stone and it was printing okay. Those marks were staying there, they weren't disappearing, none of that stuff. I'd say that was a huge, huge, huge success. There are some failures where with Chrissy's stone, the paper was sticking to the stone. When the paper was dampened, it was especially sticking to the stone. Now, we both suspect that maybe the culprit lies with the ink that we used during the second etch, and we did not remove all of that ink between the second etch and printing. Something I love about the printmaking community is that we are really well connected and generally quite eager to help and support each other. I reached out to our friend and printmaker, Liz Melnicek, and Liz went to Tamarin Printmaking Institute, which focuses exclusively on stone lithography and lithography practices. She sent a ton of different ways that we could approach troubleshooting this problem. And I'm gonna review that before we dive into what we're gonna do next. But it seems like she's on board with what we're thinking. Strip it all back, start over again. But I just wanna say a big thanks to Liz for being right there, ready and answering the questions and sending tons of great resources. So hearts to the printmaking community. We're gonna wet the stone. We're gonna ink up the stone. We're gonna get it to a point that it feels really good again. Then we're gonna dry the stone. We're gonna rosin the stone. We're gonna talc the stone. We're gonna make a mixture of tannic acid and gum arabic, probably about a 50-50 mixture. We're gonna reapply that. And then tomorrow we're gonna essentially do that step all over again, where we wash it out with biosolute and we pull out all of that because the biosolute is a bit of a solvent, that's the solvent replacement. And hopefully that will peel and pull off all of that kind of older dried up crayon black and shop black that's sitting on the stone that we both think is the actual culprit to why our paper is tearing. 
Okay, we're trying to resolve every single problem all at once. One, Chrissy has stripped off all of the ink from the stones using BioSolute. She's now rubbed BioLac into it. She is ready to move back into inking and we can get back to proofing and get back to printing. I'm tackling some of the paper problems. So when we reached out to our community about this issue, one of the responses back was it might be our paper. The other suggested res like resolution to the problem is the pressure of the press. And I think we're gonna kind of ease up on that a little bit and see where we get now. New printing base, new paper, less pressure. I hope you had fun in the studio today. I sure did. We made some prints. They were successful. It's so, so cool that we actually made some stone lithographs. I was hoping in this print to kind of learn a bit more about the translation between the drawn mark and the final mark and to have a better understanding of what I see versus what my expectation is versus what the reality is going to be. I try to pay attention to a couple major spots. One of them is the heads of the two girls. Being the focus point of the print, it's really important that these things translate between what you expect to what you get. So what I expected to get was this, and what I kind of got was a little bit of a blurrier mark. So with the girl on the left, her hair was less sharp than I thought it was going to be. It actually shrunk in mark size. The girl on the right, the eyeball uh, had a bit of a problem. So I used snake slip at one point to try and clean up the marks and remove all of the drawn material and then reshape the eye and redraw it. But I guess I didn't do too great of a job because what ended up kind of happening was this. We, ha we have a crying girl now in like every single one of these prints and that was not the intention behind this individual. So there was a little bit of a discrepancy between like what I made and what I got. I would say I was pretty successful, but there's clearly some issues along the way and I think that I can improve here. One of the other factors I really wanted to pay attention to was the quality of the line itself. So what did it look like when I was drawing with the autographic ink versus what I got at the end? So when I was drawing with it, I was, ex I was experiencing kind of a translucency with the material. Sometimes it got thicker depending on if it was like a puddle of ink versus kind of a thinner mark. And what I would expect is that those would translate into a 100% black mark on the final end. For the most part, they did translate into a mark, but sometimes the mark was broken up with kind of these white dots and it didn't feel like it was totally solid. Now, this could be a whole bunch of compounding problems. It could be my inking, it could be the etching, it could be the autographic ink, it could be the pressure on the press. There's so much that goes into it to determining why didn't this print as a solid 100% black mark. I'm not really sure, but I'm gonna learn that as we continue to make more prints. One of the other materials I really wanted to get a handle on was this snake slip. I found that I made a mistake and I needed to rectify that mistake. I wrote the word unseen forwards. And in printmaking land, this is terrible. You have to write every word backwards because the whole print prints backwards. And so uh, I had to snake slip it. And I was a little bit concerned about this because the snake slip is so kind of big and bulky that it has a really hard time erasing small details. We worked with it and we did manage to erase it and I think it was relatively successful. The previous word unseen didn't come through. The big hurdle that Chrissy and I dealt with in this print was the paper ripping as we pulled our prints. There seems to be some consensus amongst our friends that like our issue actually resides in probably our ink and that we haven't sufficiently cleaned off our stones. My hunch is that that's probably true. I don't think either of us really used any solvent and I barely used any oil to wipe off the old ink. My main goals with this print were to see how the crayons would work in terms of gradients, 
how the autographic ink would work in contrast and how the snake slip would work to create a reductive areas. For the most part, I got a wide range of tones with the crayons. Sadly, a lot of them disappeared when we went back and washed the stone out again. But there are some nice tonal ranges that I'm seeing and I'm very happy about. The autographic ink doesn't pop out as much as I expected, but I do like the way that it feels on the petals of these two lower flowers. So definitely I'll use that again. I imagine the snake slip to be a little bit different and there's a low leaf here where I had made sort of like a little seed pocket coming out. You can't see those very well, but the way that it created this very strange texture in the table, I do like a lot. In general, I'm really happy with this print. I think that there are some major successes and I think I'm, I'm very clear on what I need to do next time to get what I actually want. But overall, I think that like there's some nice things happening here and, and I'm excited to try again. If you've not yet hit like, please do so now. And you know, you can always hit that subscribe button. It's free to do so. And if you feel like you want to support us financially a little bit, you can become a member of our Patreon community, The Spark Club. Goodbye for now.